Hello and welcome to TalkSomewhere.com. Today we're going to talk about how to create a chat room using something called long polling. In case you don't know what that is, it's a fancy term for saying that we're going to use JavaScript to ping the server and see if uh, any new chat messages have been added and then pull them down and show in our display area. All the code that I'm going to write is available on my website. You can just copy and paste it into your developer environment and just have fun with it. So let's jump to the actual coding of it. Uh, there's going to be a PHP file, a JS file, the HTML portion and the CSS part. It's fairly simple. Uh, in PHP I've used uh, the Code Igniter framework. If you don't, if you haven't used that before, don't worry. You can look at the PHP portion of this and just uh, try this in any framework that you feel comfortable with. Okay. So without any further ado, let's start with the HTML portion of it. I've included my CSS file. I'm using the jQuery JavaScript framework. If you don't know about it, just Google it up. All you have to do is download a file and include it. Uh, next is the chat.js file, uh, which is going to be the most interesting part because, as you've guessed it, this is being done via JS. Let me actually just show you what this is going to look like in the end. Uh, here are all the messages, and it's being scrolled down as you type in. Uh, again, you can improve the CSS of it to just beautify it as to whatever you like. Um, a word to the device, long polling is not something that is used nowadays. You, right now, you, people are using socket level programming, which is much more better. But I'm showing you this so as to you have knowledge of what was there before and what is there now, which is socket level programming. Hopefully, I'll create a video after this one on how to create a chat room in socket level programming soon. So uh, I type in a message saying, testing one, two, three, stuff like that. It shows up. The page scrolls down, as you can see at the very end of it. This is a div where I've set the CSS property to scroll down as new messages pop up. And um, let's go from there. Let's go to the uh, coding part of it. So there's the jQuery framework and then there's the chat.js which is going to be interesting. Here's the main div and then there's the chat center. This is where all the text messages are going to pop up which is this area. Okay. Next is another div and that's where I have the form text area. Uh, this is the element or as you've guessed it where you're going to type your messages and then there's a send it button but you can also hit the enter key. Notice I didn't hit the uh, send it button. Now we're going to jump to the, well I'm not going to explain the CSS portion, it's fairly simple. Now we're going to jump to the JS portion of it, which is the most interesting. Uh, most interesting because you have to be walked through it. Uh, after that it's fairly simple. Uh, I'm using jQuery, so I'm going to make sure the page is loaded before I move forward. That's what Document.Ready does. Otherwise the JS kind of falls apart at times. The next thing I've done is I've created an object literal. Uh, let me just scroll down, which is right here. If you don't know what object literals are, don't fret. You can go to my website and watch a video on this kind of stuff, which is in the, you go to talksummit.com, go to the JavaScript portion, and you'll see object literal video. But for now, let's see if you can just follow along. Uh, I created a variable, chat, chat object, and then after the curly braces, I include the variable state, give it the value of zero. Running is another variable, which is defined after the comma, with the boolean value of false, then I called a then I created a function called get status. And what this function basically does is once you first enter the chat room, I need to know what point you've entered the chat room because all the messages that are being typed in is being saved in a txt file. Let me just kind of close that and open it again. Here's the txt file. And here are all the messages that were typed in. So I need to know at what point you entered the conversation. So I can show you from that point onward. I'm not going to show you messages that were typed in four or five minutes ago or even three minutes ago. I need to be very specific about this. Okay? And that's what this function is going to do. Get status is going to say this is what line or this is what comment this person just entered the conversation. After this function is the update chat function. This is going to be called every second. And what I'm basically going to be doing is I'm going to ask the server what are the new comments that have been entered. And then I'm going to pick those comments and then as you've guessed it display it in oops, this area. 
okay so that's what the update chat function does and then the last one was going to be the send chat function which is whatever you type is sent to the server and then shown on your side as well before we move on so that's the JS file now let's go through this one by one so inside this chat object variable um, object literal variable I've de defined this function get status now what you've noticed is I'm checking for this dot running to be true before I move forward and what this is is um, I mentioned that every second I'm sending a request to the server and seeing if any new comments are sent this variable is making sure that I don't send four or five requests at the same time because that's not helpful I'm gonna do one action at one time so this is saying initially you set the false and false meaning with the opposite it's true so as soon as I start this particular function the first thing I'm doing is setting the value true saying that don't set any other request to the server until I'm done once I am done, you'll notice that I'm setting it to false. Okay, um, now the Ajax part of this starts. The type of Ajax first I'm sending is a post to this particular URL. The data type is going to be JSON. And the variables that I'm sending is a uh, function with the value of status. The success, once I get a success portion from them, we'll look at this part of this. Uh, but first we need to jump to this particular PHP part and here's that part the first thing I do is I get the variable function I clean it up in CodeIgniter this is the feature where we sanitize any information that is sent to us and I save it in this variable and here's the path to my file which I showed you earlier which is saving all the text messages and then we port switch to this part here's my switch and the action that I'm performing at this point is status and the status part what I'm doing is I'm reading the text file that I had earlier uh, we can look at this function right now I defined it I send it the file path that checks that the file exists reads it reads the file and sends me the contents of that file so once I have all the comments that were entered even before I entered the chat room I move to this part and say count the number of lines that were actually in that file so I get to the last file the most up-to-date comment that was just entered the last line is fed to me and that at this point I know this is the point this person entered the chat room he hasn't seen any messages yet and that is the most recent message that we, we should show him and then at this point you'll notice that the break statement is hit and this is what is sent back to the JS file. Uh, we break out of the switch statement and I JSON encode my message before I actually send it back to the JS. So now here we are. The success is hit. I take the data.lines. I take the most recent line, uh, most recent comment that this person is, hasn't seen yet and I save it in this variable which is state. And then I say okay now you can send more requests. See the running part of it? I say now you can send more requests to the server so I unlocked it uh, in case you're wondering why I'm using this up here and then chat obj down here the reason is that when the function is first initially called they know what this is actually referring to and this is referring to all the variables that are outside of it just like in other object oriented programming languages however when we move down here this is another function that is being called so if I said this dot state down here, it would just get confused as to what I'm talking about. It would not, it might not reference things out there. So that's why we said chat obj to be more specific. Now that is the get status function. So if you move to the very top of it, as soon as the whole document ready is set, the first thing we say is, hey, what line is this person, or what is the most recent comment that we need to show this guy? We done that part. The second thing we do is call the set interval JavaScript function, which basically is do so and so things x, y, and z every x amount of seconds. I've said one uh, one thousand actually means one second. So every second, it should call the update chat method inside the chat obj object literal. Update chat, as I've told you before, is going to go to the server, see if any new comments have been entered, and then send them back to the user if any. So we're going to look at that next.